we're going to take a look at the Magic NTAG chip. And to do that, I'm going to use the Proxspace environment on Windows to run the uh, Proxmark 3 client. So I'm going to go ahead and get into there. And then we're going to go to Proxmark 3, and then into the client, and then got to do the little dot slash and com6. And you can see here I'm running uh, Iceman RRG and the version number of the client. It also matches the version number of the firmware and the boot ROM. That is very important. Um, but this is also important to note the version because the commands and uh, naming conventions and things do tend to change uh, from version to version and from branch to branch of the firmware. So um, that'll be important if you're running some other firmware and you're unsure uh, why the command isn't working the way it's working in the video, that's probably why. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. We got the magic chip on the Proxmark. So the first thing we're going to do is run a script. And this is a Lua script. And um, it used to be called something else more commonly, but now it's called magic write. And we're going to do the H here just so that we can get a help list uh, from the script. And you can see that um, there's quite a lot of arguments. The um, C was read the magic configuration. Let's do that. Go ahead and read it. And you can see that it's set in the uh, NTAG 213. It's got the default password. There's no pack set. The version information, I believe, is correct for an NTAG 213. Uh, and the signature is blank. And so these specifics are important. So, for example, uh, if you are going to want to emulate an NTAG 215 so you can use it with Amiibo or however you pronounce that, um, the little, uh, you know, character gaming things, then you need to be making sure that uh, all those settings are correct because I believe the system, uh, and I'm going to get a, a, a sniff log from, from a legitimate, um, you know, little avatar character thing, uh, but I believe that the system will check at least some of those, if not the signature, it'll probably do a get version, um, but it's going to, you're going to want to make sure that all those settings are correct to emulate the tag completely, including the signature. Um, so let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the other options here. So if we look at the T setting for tag type, um, that's what you need to do if you want to change the uh, emulation type. So let's just change this uh, to an NTAG216, which is my personal favorite. Um, so we'll hit 7. We'll hit that. And so it's written the new version. That, ref that version uh, information reflects the, the tag type, a new tag type 2. Um, so now let's go ahead and read it. So you can see it's set in as an NTAG216, password is default, PAC is default. So PAC is the password acknowledgement. So when the, when the authorization um, command is sent to the chip and the, the password is correct, it will return the, PAC authoriz the password authorization. So uh, that's just a way for the reader to know um, that the, the chip has uh, been uh, you know, authenticated, which will the command will return true, but also uh, if you set a custom pack, then the reader really knows, ah, okay, I'm really talking to a chip. Again, it's not secure because you could easily sniff that conversation or you could even easily um, do a multi-tiered attack where you, you know, you, you know, present uh, the tag UID to the reader. It will literally give you the password. Then you run over to the tag at a later date, send the password, and then get back the pack that you're supposed to get back. And then, you know, go back to the reader and emulate both the UID and the pack and you know, then you you won. So it's not really true security. The password settings for and tags are just kind of a, you know locking your car door. You can still break the window, but it's just kind of first level security, just to be aware of you know how security is actually working on these passwords. Uh, they are sent in the clear, and they're not very great. So uh, in short, I mean, this is you know how you would emulate different tag types. It's very straightforward. You can see again in the argument section, uh, you can set the password, you can set the pack. Uh, the signature data can be set, OTP data, and it says here one-time pad, but that's that's not actually what it is. OTP is one-time programmable. One-time pad is like a cryptographic function, but this is just uh, OTP bits. And so like on an tag 216, your OTP bits are page four of the memory, and that page is used exclusively for uh, capability containers, according to the NDEF uh, or NFC uh, tag type specification. So uh, OTP, you can set. So that's the basics. Uh, we're going to be doing some more testing of the tag uh, and its features and capabilities in terms of emulation a little bit later. Uh, but that's it. The site might be called Dangerous Things, but remember, safety first.